analyzing big data is not straightforward. It takes time to set up your analytic systems and writing analytical queries can be complicated. And also sometimes it takes forever to get the result from your analytic system just because it takes so much processing to analyze big data. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can use simple SQL statements with things like where clause group by and order by to analyze a table with more than 100 billion rows. The table that I'm gonna be looking at has close to seven terabytes of data in a single table. Let's get straight into it. All right, so this is called the BigQuery console, the BigQuery UI. BigQuery is a global data warehouse which is made available to you as a managed service through the Google Cloud Platform. Within BigQuery console, there are many sample data sets that are also provided to you. Here, for example, we are in the BigQuery samples data set. And within BigQuery samples, you will see a data set which is called Wikipedia benchmarks. Here you've got multiple tables and some of these is what we will use for our query today. We have a table with 1,000 rows, 1 million rows, 1 billion rows, and the biggest one here has 100 billion rows. So we're going to be querying this data. But let's start with something small to show you what the table looks like and what is going to be the query that we write. So if I click this table, it shows me the fields in this table. So the fields are year, month, day, the project name, the language, the title, and the views. And we're going to count the number of views and we're gonna say which is the most popular language on Wikipedia. So let's quickly look at the details of this table. This table has roughly 1,192 rows and it is roughly 85 kilobytes in size. So very tiny, not a large set of data, definitely not big data by any means, but let's see what the query will, might look like. So let me go and say query this table. This opens up a query console for me and I can start writing my query here. So I'm gonna say, select language and sum of views from this table. And I'm gonna say group by language, order by sum of views. And I'm gonna run this query. So obviously it's not a very large table, so the results should come here right away. Now, let me do one thing. Let me say order by views descending because we want to find out the most popular language. Yeah, there you go. So 0 0.3 seconds, 14.5 KB processed, and it says that English is the most popular language on Wikipedia, which is kind of expected. Now, one thing you might note is here it says only around 15 KB process, but if you remember your table definition, it has roughly 85 KBs in there. So why is the difference? Difference is because if you go to the table, you will see that this has multiple columns, but the way BigQuery works is it only charges you and it only processes the columns that are there in your query. So in our query, we have language and we have views. We have only two columns. These are the only two columns that we are either selecting or doing a group by on or doing a uh, order by on. So there is no other column. That's why it is only charging you for those two columns, the language and then the view, which is here, right? So it is only charging you for these two columns. So now this is, this is exciting, but now let's uh, step it up a little bit and let's say how long it will take if I have not 1000 rows, but let's say 100,000 rows. So I'm going to query this table called 100K. Now, let me quickly show you the table. This table has uh, 124,000 rows actually, and this is roughly 8.5 MB in size. Again, not a huge table, pretty straightforward. So again, it uh, ran for about 0 0.3 seconds really, really fast, and it processed only 1.5 MB as you can see, and it produced the result really fast. Now let's step it up even further. Let's do one with 10 million rows, and let's see how much time does that take. So this table you can see has 12.5 million rows actually, and it's about 860 MB. And you can see that the result came out in still less than a second. It processed only two columns, so not that much. Now, what is happening behind the scenes is 
it doesn't matter how much data you give to BigQuery because BigQuery is able to scale horizontally. It is able to take all the data that you're giving it, understand how much compute is required to process that data and then horizontally scale by spinning up brand new workers that can take on that workload. Now let's do the big guys here. Let's do, this was 10 million rows. Now let's look at the table that has a billion rows here. So 100 times of this. So a table with a billion rows. This table has one single table with 1.25 billion rows actually and roughly 85 gigs of data in a single table. Let me run the same query on this table. So if I go here and if I say 1 billion, right, that was our table. And if I run this query, the result came out in just 2.5 seconds and it processed about 14.5 GB. Again, only those two columns, but you will see that it is still extremely fast. The results came out extremely fast. And now let's try out our biggest query that we were trying to play with the 100 billion rows. So you will see that this is a single table with 106 billion rows and close to seven terabytes of data. So just to give you some context, if you had to spin up a Hadoop cluster to do this analysis and do the uh, query like this, it would probably take a few hours, depends obviously upon how you write the queries, how uh, large your cluster is and how it is configured and so on. But generally a query with a hundred billion rows, it's not a simple query. And I'm gonna also tell you how much does this query cost here in BigQuery because that, that can also be another component to analyze data like this. You might have to set up an expensive system but I'm gonna tell you exactly how much I'm gonna be spending when I run this query. So let's go to our query again, and I'm gonna change this to 100 billion, and I expect it to take slightly longer. So you see, we started with just 1000 rows, and when we came to 1 billion rows, our query completion time went from 0 0.3 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Now it's starting to, you know, uh, take some time because BigQuery has to spin up a lot more clusters and the clusters have to do a lot more work. Now let's try it out with a hundred billion rows. I'm gonna run the query here and we're gonna see how long it takes. All right, so looks like it took 14.2 seconds only. Only 14.2 seconds to analyze and run a query that deals with 100 billion rows, more than 100 billion rows, and the table actually itself is 6.7 terabytes as we saw, and it is only processing 1.2 terabytes because it is only processing the columns that you're supposed to analyze. And the results came out in 14.2 seconds, which is excellent. Now, you might ask how much does this charge? So BigQuery actually charges you roughly about $5 per terabyte of data processed. So this is 1.2 terabytes. So this was a $6 query that I just fired here. Now compare that to what you might have to do if you had to set up your own analytical system. Now you might say that you had to provision BigQuery. Well, actually, no, I did not have to do anything because BigQuery comes as a managed service. It's as good as opening your Google Drive and doing something with it. You don't have to buy that storage server. So it's very similar. You don't have to set anything up. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. You just upload all your data and start querying. So here it is. We just queried a table with 100 billion rows, roughly seven terabytes of data in a single table. It took us 14.2 seconds and it costs us $6 to query this data. I hope you get to enjoy BigQuery. Start using BigQuery and start analyzing your data. I'll see you around next time. Thank you.